Thank you guys so much. Please sit down, relax. It's gonna be a hot minute, pull out a snack. I just wanna first start off by thanking this amazing hotel and the wait staff here. Like, they are on it. The people running around with the little glow sticks, they're crazy. You guys are on it. This hotel is so beautiful. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but I actually just graduated high school. Thank you. I applied to colleges. I got into seven out of the 10 schools I applied to. Granted, seven of them were community colleges, but I still got in. I was accepted and I got in. Uh, but I was also denied. So USC, NYU. <clears throat> anyway, now I'm not here to talk about all my failures and pour out my sorrows to you, but I do think rejection doesn't only come in the form of a small letter in the mail. It can come in all forms. We all face rejection in many ways in our life, whether it's rejection of our gender identity or our sexual orientation or the clothes we want to wear to school. Someone, somewhere, is going to reject you. I think rejection has played a large part of my upbringing and being afraid to be myself. I've um, struggled with my own identity since before I can remember. I have memories going to see a therapist at the age of five discussing my youthful concerns and worries. And it wasn't until a situation that happened now, like 10 years ago, that I started really thinking about who I was. Are you a boy or a girl? Said a fellow second grader on the playground. You know, I stood there, feeling as though I needed to be offended, like, and replied softly, with a tone of confusion, a boy. And you know, standardized test scores, passports, permits, Disneyland passes are all divided by one thing. Gender, it's not a question. There is no multiple choice. The answer is in your brain, you were given it. Or so they tell you. My entire life I've challenged the idea of gender. And after being asked that question on the playground, I started asking myself, well, what gender am I? Until that point, I never really thought about gender. To me, it was just a ward or a placard on a bathroom. I never thought twice before playing any game or putting on any shirt. I just did me. Nevertheless, I began to get older, and consequently, kids started making fun of me. I remember spending countless hours crying before bed, asking my mother why I couldn't wear this one special pink shirt to school. And her response was, I don't want you to get hurt. You know, I'd nod quietly, get ready for bed, and pray that one day I could wear that pink shirt. And you know, although I was deeply taken aback that I couldn't express my inner destiny's child rolling up to school in a pink sequins shirt, Listen, I too didn't want to get hurt. You know, and it sounds really weird to say, but as much as the bullies and the haters forced me to suppress my true self, it allowed me to gain a certain fire under my butt, which in return made me be more myself. But nonetheless, I was told that I didn't belong. And as an elementary student, I shed parts of myself that I'm still gaining back. You know, going to school was like being undercover. If there's a color, pick blue. If there's a group of boys and a group of girls eating lunch, eat lunch with the boys. Don't talk weird, don't walk feminine, do what a boy would do, I kept telling myself. You know, I had a constant battle in my head with two people talking to me, the person who wanted to be free, and well, the person who just wanted to be safe. And on a day where the girls and boys were split up for PE, I came home in despair. When sitting on my mother's lap telling her about my day, she calmed me down and brought me upstairs. It was as if my dad had just handed me the keys to a new car on my 16th birthday when I found myself entering my mother's closet and being given the okay to play. That one time playing around in her clothes became an everyday appointment. I'd rush home after school and play in my mom's closet. You know, that time spent wearing heels and dancing around to 80s disco music was a breath of fresh air. I felt safe, riveted, and hopeful. You know, I thought hard about what this award meant and quite literally the name of it being visibility. Being seen is what many LGBTQ people, such as myself, have struggled with so much. My mother saw me, she understood me, and my mother's bedroom became the only thought in my head, whether I was reading or on recess or taking a test, that was what my mind was focused on. That single bedroom was my motivation to keep moving. However, I became dependent on my mother's room, and my life soon became limited to the four walls upstairs, and it needed to stop. It wasn't until I was watching the Disney Channel movie, Camp Rock, that my mind changed. Thank you, Camp Rock fans. It's a good movie, okay? 
The film highlights the song, and no, I won't sing it, but I will quote it. This is real. This is me. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to let the light shine on me. And I was watching that, and with those words, I just broke into tears and turned my head to see my mother standing in the doorway. She told me, if you're ready, I'm ready. That next day, I wore that pink shirt to school and rocked it. I ignored the bullies and embraced who I was. I mean, of course I wasn't free from then on. The Lord didn't rise before me and tell me how I was done with the adversity and how I had no more struggle. Because believe me, I had struggle, okay? It's been there, it's been real. But in reality, we're all going to have struggle in our life. And while knowing that we can overcome it, you know, it's something we shouldn't expect to have. You know, Miley said it best as I quote, it's the climb. You know, I look at life like a hill a Beverly Hill with artificial turf because I'm allergic to grass. <laughs> We're all constantly climbing up our hill and there's bumps and crevices that get in our way and we pray we never have to reach one again. But the truth is, if you're over the hill, you did. Okay, there's always gonna be roadblocks. Now finally, I wanna say this to the kids or even adults who just clicked on this video because the thumbnail was me looking fabulous in this suit that I've learned that those people who want to tear you down are just jealous, angry, insecure humans who would kill to get a piece of who you are. Even if it feels like everyone is against you and the rejection surrounds you so much that you don't feel visible at all, I urge you guys to find it in yourself to evict the judgment from your mind, to know you are in fact seen and that you are more than just special, you are molecularly unique. You have something no one else has and a purpose that can and will change our world even if you don't see it. Now, For a while I didn't see it and I'm still starting to, quite honestly. But I know there will be a day where we can all put on our pink shirts despite what the kids at school would say. Because at the end of the day, what matters isn't the Trumps or the haters or the colleges we don't get into. You know, what we really need to do is channel our adversity and shoot back love and compassion with a teensy bit of shade, okay? But still love. You just gotta own it. I did it in second grade, and even though it was hard, I'm proud to say I can walk in any room with any damn color on my shirt, wherever I want, whenever I want. I want to thank HRC for truly the greatest honor I've received thus far in my young life. Well, second greatest. I did win most likely to be BFFs with Kim K in my senior class. That was pretty cool. But this is truly a phenomenal experience I will never forget. And I salute HRC for all the amazing work they do with the LGBTQ plus community. They just do so much, honestly, it's crazy. And I want to thank my parents and my family for supporting me since day one. There was never a doubt that you guys wouldn't love me or accept me unconditionally. And I realize that's a rarity and truly feel so lucky. And I share this award with not only the fighters who came decades before me, but with any kid or person who feels like they have to hide a part of themselves to fit in or feel normal. Thank you.